Welcome to this introductory series of training videos for SOLIDCAM. This video's topic is the turning operation from the turning or mill turn module. So the turning operation pretty much covers OD and ID turning of your parts within the mill turn module or the turning module. So let's take a look at how we would do that here. So to get to the turning operation, you can go to your SOLIDCAM turning, go to the turning icon over here, or you can do it by right-clicking on either the setup or right-clicking on your last toolpath, going to add turning operation and turning. Now, the reason you might want to right-click on a toolpath is because you want to insert an operation immediately after. So by right-clicking on my previous facing operation that we covered in the face turning operation video, um, I can add the turning operation after that. And the reason you want to make sure that you know exactly where you're putting your turning operations is because each turning operation is essentially a stock recognition toolpath. These toolpaths are going to look at the updated stock to know where the material is in terms of entry and exit and where to do the step overs. Uh, so if you put a toolpath that is out of order, you won't be able to really calculate it accurately because it's going to be looking at the updated stock at the time and place that you put it in your tree. Uh, so it's always a good idea to either work in order, or if you're working on a toolpath and you don't want to save it just yet, you want to add it to the list and then maybe shuffle it in after, you can always do a save, which will add it to the list, and then you can drag and drop it into the proper order later on. So let's take a look at the turning operation. Again, we use the same workflow of geometry, tool, levels, technology, link, um, and Pretty much they all work the same way. In this case, the turning operation allows you to do both outside and inside turning, front and back turning if you had that as well. We're gonna go through that when we get to the mode section. But in the geometry section, uh, similar to what we would have seen in some of the other toolpaths, you have the option of using either wireframe geometry or solid geometry. Now this holds true for all the turning toolpaths, but in turning itself, this might be useful depending on the model that you're working with. In terms of wireframe, it's actually referring to the target profile we generated when we created the part in the first place. To see how we created the target profile and the stock profile, I'll refer you to the getting started in turning and mill turn cam part video in this introductory series. Um, so with that sketch that represents the target profile, I can use wireframe. So if I just click on new geometry, first thing you'll notice is that green highlight there that represents my updated stock shows that it has already been faced. If you recall uh, from, from the previous window, I already have a facing operation applied to this part. To review the face turning operation, I refer you to the face turning video in the introductory series. Um, so since this has already been turned, this toolpath can start right here. Now, even if I didn't face it, I will be adding some sort of modification to it so that it'll it'll start wherever the stock starts. We can see that in in, uh, in a second. So by selecting on that first edge there, I can go and select all my individual edges if I like of my wireframe. Or what I can do is take advantage of my up to entity that I have checked here. Now I have that set by default, defaults that I set in my global settings. To see how that could be done, I refer you to the global settings video in this introductory series. So I'll click on that first edge there, and I pretty much want to choose all these edges up until maybe this last one over here. Rather than choosing each individual one, they're all on the same sketch plane. So when I do up to entity, it already will know that those are all connected in the same sketch plane. I can just click on the first entity, the last entity, and it'll actually find that relationship for me. So that's all I need to do there. I can just click the green check mark, and that becomes my chain geometry for my turning toolpath. But there is also the solid option. The solid option can be useful if you have parts that are part of a family and you want to program it just once and then toggle between things like configurations or um, other modifications to your part. You want it to be referencing the face of the part rather than a sketch that's based off the face. Uh, so to use the solid geometry definition, I can click on new geometry and you see the window's a little different. What we're actually doing here is we're looking at it from this point of view and we're choosing the first face like I did here, and the last face. You can see that it's finding that contour for me. Those contours represent the intersection of all these faces. So basically in that cutting direction, in this case counterclockwise in this point of view, um, from that face to that face, it found that all these faces are connected, so it found that geometry for me. If I click the green check mark here, it generates a similar profile to what we had before. So between wireframe and solid, 
you have different ways to select your geometry on your part, and they have different uses. But uh, from my perspective, the wireframe is the easiest one to use. The solid is easier for when you do things like configurations or templates or, or any kind of additional higher level functionality. So I'm not gonna save that, I'm just gonna use my wireframe that we have there. Tool, I'll click select, and I'm gonna go and select from a pre-existing tool. In this case, I have my tool one already selected. To see how to create turning tools, I refer you to the creating turning tools uh, video in this introductory series. So, check mark. Levels, this is going to be a safety distance away from the updated stock. So in this case, I still have lots of stock here, but if I had a custom made stock or I've already turned this down a little bit, this is a safety distance away from anything in the updated stock. If I go to technology, this is the main parameters of this toolpath. And in this case, we start by looking at the mode. From the geometry, it recognized that I'm doing OD turning. So it already knew that if this is going this direction and the solids over here, I must be doing OD turning. But with this one toolpath, I could either do OD, ID, front or back. Front or back versus OD, ID, really all that is is just if I'm turning in the Z direction or the X direction. That's all I'm really doing here. Now you could use this toolpath for facing, but what this, tool, this mode is specifically for is if there's any movements in the XZ plane while you're doing the X turning. So if there was a dish or a counter bore or some sort of fillet, this would be useful if you wanted to move the tool in the X direction, but still turn anything on the front face of the part. In our case, I'm just gonna go with the OD turning. So I'll go to rough, and here are our rough parameters. Under rough type, we have smooth stairs and ramping. If you look at the icon in the bottom left corner, Smooth follows the exact contour of the toolpath that we, we've chosen. So in this case, that, that taper in the back there, it'll follow that taper with each pass that it does. If I do stairs, it just does the pass, moves up an X, and retreats. So essentially, it leaves behind steps on any kind of curb or taper face. And ramping, basically, if I can progress to my part as a ramping move, then I can get it to do ramping. But I'm going to leave it at smooth for now. This is the roughing section, so here are our step over, or at least our, our, our uh, depth of cut with each pass. And you can see that it is just based from the top of the updated stock going down. But if we're turning a part and there's a feature on the part that falls in between those steps, let's say between this diameter and this diameter, it's not exactly 40 thou. There's less than 40 thou of a diameter change there. Uh, to account for that, that small step, we have adaptive step down. What this will do is add a pass that finishes that diameter before it steps up the next 40 thou step. Retreat distance, as it does each pass, it has to retreat away from the part. So this is really just retreat and repositioning distance. If the insert I'm using can do a zigzag cut, then we can switch to zigzag cut under direction. We are doing a roughing, so we have to leave some material behind on the X face and the Z face. So that's what we control over here. And if you were turning a part that was at an angle that is not purely in X or purely in Z, we have the ability here to add a roughing angle. And that is off of the Z plane. With the same tool, if I'd like to do a roughing and a finish, then in the finish section, I have control over my semi-finishing and finishing options. If I go to finish, you can see that we have the ability to do an ISO turn method, which will basically just follow that toolpath, that chain exactly. If I do a stairs method, I give it some parameters to figure out where the stairs are, but essentially stairs, or some people refer to this as a no drag, what this will do is it'll recognize that along certain faces, I can go in one direction, and then I'll reposition to go down a face, and that controls the pressure on the tool. So you can see from this graphic here, using these parameters here, it has the idea of how much I'd like it to, uh, how I'd like it to incorporate this part. I would like it to go across here, maybe reposition, go down, Go across here, reposition, go down. So depending on the insert you're using, you might have different parameters for your stair method. And then there's down only. If this tool can only take pressure on the down force, then it'll go down, reposition, and go down. So you'll see that when you do different uh, different tool paths, you might want to uh, equalize the pressure or, or um, control where the, the insert is working with down only. What we're doing here, I'll just leave it as ISO turn method. 
strategies. There are some parts, for instance, my part here, where this tool, if I just add the tool to my, my mouse here, obviously the insert does not have enough of a clearance to finish that groove. I don't even want it to try doing that groove. I just want it to jump across the top here. So what the descending motion controls allow me to do is, if I didn't want to go in those grooves, I can just say non-descending, meaning that it won't go into that. It'll just continue that diameter and go up. Essentially, you can think of this as up only in terms of a strategy. Uh, geometry splitting. If the part is so long that I don't want to turn the whole thing and then eventually have a really uh, thin diameter, almost like a wet noodle on my lathe, then I can get it to be separated into sections. And that's what these sections here are. I can either do it in, in this case, 400,000 sections, or I can do it in terms of variable and then just pick points along my chain where I begin to do these sections. So that can be really helpful if you're doing a long part, maybe held between centers, whatever it is. And then lastly is the break edges section. So break edges is the idea that this part might be designed without any kind of edge breaking in terms of this corner here or these corners here. Um, some of these I won't be able to do because my insert has a corner rad, so I can't do internal corners. And maybe this sharp edge here is not appropriate for my QA, maybe, uh, or, my, or my mating. Whatever the reason, I might want to break some of these edges. So rather than going back to the original design and adding the chamfers as a fillet, even though I have that ability, uh, maybe I just want to make it quick and done inside of the toolpath. This allows me to do that. For internal corners, I can check this box. And I have the ability to choose between a chamfer or a fillet. If I choose either one of these, it opens up the parameters for that. And any internal corner, it will actually add a chamfer or a fillet. For external corners, same thing. I have the option of chamfer or fillet. And any external corners in my geometry will be, uh, will be uh, updated to have that uh, chamfer or that fillet. So that will register almost like a gouge in your solid verify and your verification because it's not part of the original design. But since you're adding it for edge breaking, uh, you know that you've added it for a reason. Uh, and you can also uh, modify it as you like, depending on what is actually an external corner or an internal corner. One thing to note with the edge breaking is that the first point in your chain, if we just go back to my geometry, this point right here does not count as an external corner. It is the beginning of the chain. So it doesn't know if that point, that vertice leads to a line that makes it external or internal. So in that case, you'll need to uh, do some, uh, some work in the modified geometry section to get it to look like an external or an internal corner. For help with that, I refer you to the tips and tricks videos on our YouTube channel where I cover that specific uh, trick. If I just do a save and calculate, We'll see with my non-descending, it doesn't go in the groove, but it does include the first chamfer. If we zoom out here, we can see that it did my 40,000 steps, and then there is a final finishing pass. What we can do is do a quick simulate on that. And in the turning and meal turn module, there's an additional uh, simulation called turning. What that gives us is just basically this profile view, this cross-section view of our turn part. And it lets us see everything in preview. So we can see the movement of the tool as it goes across, taking those cuts. Now the turning module, uh, the turning simulation in the turning and milter module doesn't provide any stock recognition or um, uh, collision detection. So you want, you'll still want to refer to the um, turning to the hostcad and the solid verify for your simulations. But another thing to note about a difference between uh, this module and milling module is that once you get into solid verify you actually have some additional views here so i can look at it from the profile view as well i can look at it as a whole like normal i can look at it with half three quarter one quarter sections so this can be very useful if i'm doing any turning on the inside and i'd like to see what it looks like in that that uh that cross section view Any questions of this or anything else from SolidCam, just give us a call at 1-866-975-1115, extension 2, and stay tuned for the rest of the videos on this YouTube channel. Thanks for watching.